Now back to Making a Difference, only here on V81 Radio, South Manila. All right, so we're now back. Um, welcome to those who are just tuning in. You are watching Making a Difference. Again, this is a show to um, inspire and motivate the youth. Um, again, my name is Erica. And just before the break, we... I already, I've already interviewed one youth organization called Tiny Helpers PH. So Tiny Helpers PH, um, they so far they've received um, a lot of donations actually from different people, and they've been giving out um, PPEs, relief packs, and um, other donations um, to those families and frontliners who are in need. And they actually still want to continue on even after the pandemic. So um, we're going to talk to them again later at the end of the show. But if you want to check them out and donate, actually, they, they still have more um, stuff to donate. So if you would know of any community, they, have, they still have relief packs to donate. So again, if you know of a community, please comment down below or um, send them a message. They're called Tiny Helpers PH. Okay, so for the next two organizations, um, I have I have Munting Pagsaludo, and the one representing Munting Pagsaludo is Miss Jamie Gonzalez, and I also have Marielle Kunanan from Super Super. Can I, Jamie and Marielle? There we go. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. So while waiting for Jamie to come in, um, let's talk about your yourself first. Um, okay. maybe you could tell us um where you graduated from or if you're already working now. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, I graduated from University of the Philippines, Diliman, two years ago. I'm also a psychology graduate, BA Psychology. And then um, I spent a year in law school afterwards, but now I'm working in a human rights organization, uh, the Asia Foundation. It's an international mm. non-government organization. Okay. So how long have you been working um, for that? Um, Almost eight months, and I have a part-time job uh, as a graphic designer um, in a health NGO, uh, social innovation and health initiative. So I'm really going through that path of NGO life. <laughs> yes. Okay. Understand. I, I know a couple then a couple of friends who are also in NGOs, and we have Jamie. Hi, Jamie. How are you? Can you hear me? Hi. Okay, there. Great. Okay. I can hear you. Okay. So, yep. Jamie, um, yes, I can hear you. So, maybe you could tell the viewers something about yourself, um, where you graduated from, and if you're already working or if you're still studying. So, Marielle and I are actually batchmates since high school, and then we both graduated from UP Diliman with a BA Psychology. Um, I started working for a digital marketing agency after graduation, and then um, about after a year, I um, changed my career path, and I'm currently working for the local government academy for DILG. Oh, wow. Okay, great. How long have you been with them now? Uh, not very long, just since um, February, I think. February. Oh. Okay, I see. Okay, so um, maybe we could start with Marielle. Um, maybe you could talk more on Super Trooper and what uh, the organization does. Um, basically, Super Trooper, uh, it's an online platform that connects, uh, directly connects donors to PUV drivers who can um, they earn their daily living because uh, transportation is suspended during the quarantine. And although I know that some transportation is being resumed after the ECQ is lifted and since we're going to GCQ, it's still different because it's going to be in minimum amounts and it's not going to be the same as before because a lot of people are, you know, working from home. And we decided to make a super to pair maybe it's like on the second or third week of quarantine because um, I saw this tweet 
it it was a viral tweet and then um basically it was a girl posting a text message that she got from her past angkas driver asking for any amount through gcash um 20 pesos or 50 pesos would go a long way and then i started searching on twitter about um drivers and gcash and there were a lot of people a lot of troopers posting on there with their gcash numbers because it's a convenient way to get money during the lockdown and then it kind of clicked that I know a lot of people who want to help out during the pandemic, but they don't want to go outside, of course, because we do want this to be over as soon as possible. So we want to stay home. We want to, as much as possible, uh, do social distancing. So um, we decided to just make this platform where we can um, connect them and make a way for the donors to donate online. And then it has a, the design has a twofold platform, like why, people ask us why we wouldn't just get the money on our own and then disperse it so everyone gets an equal, an equal amount. So first is we want to make sure that there's an interaction between the donors and the donees because most of the time donations are so, it's a figure. You reach, you want to reach a hundred thousand or a million and then your money, you don't see the effect of your money. Whereas if you if you see the conditions that our troopers are living in, some of them live in their jeeps, some of them have to go to dialysis and they have to walk to the hospital. If you see their conditions, you see that your 20 pesos or your 50 pesos can buy them uh, a meal or a cup, isang kilo ng rice or canned goods. So you know that you're actually making an impact on them no matter how little you can give. And um, I have a picture that I can show. And then um, basically it's, it summarizes how much we've given so far. And yeah, um, we've already helped 1,730 drivers and the average donation for each driver is 2,000, but we do know of some people who have reached 25,000. Um, that uh, person in particular, he's a, he's a trooper with six dogs. And then oh. imagine like, you, I, I always say that the people who have the least have to give the most love. So they have six dogs. And yun yung, yun yung talagang pitch niya, please give me money so I can feed my dogs. And then, yeah, um, we ha we've recorded a total of 10,000 donations on the page before we archived it. And then um, we estimated that the amount of donations that we've received um, or the trippers have received ever since we start um, is minimum of 2.5, but the actual number is probably around 3.5 million. So yeah, right now the page is archived because we want the 1,731 drivers that we already have there to have um, as much as they can get. And um, you know we don't want them going in there and not getting any anything, whereas some people used to get a lot. So yeah, that's why we archived the page for now. Okay, but you're, ano naman, you're you're still working towards bringing back. Um, um, not necessarily bringing back, but we're still facilitating donations. Like we still have a page uh, up, and people still send us money that we disperse, and we just send them the receipt so they know that their money's going where they want it to go. Okay, that that's great. So, um, actually, the reason why I have both on you, uh, both of you um on screen right now is this there's somewhat a connection between the both of you so maybe marielle you could tell um you could tell the viewers how um Mun, how you are somewhat connected to munting pagsaludo um so basically when we started this we didn't expect it to become like a, a trend um mm -hmm. but then within the first week uh we got around twenty thousand members in the group and then people were asking us if we can um start posting construction workers or security guards or you know all of these people these communities that are disadvantaged by the um, lockdown but then we were concerned that um we want to help this particular sector and there's not enough help for them if we expand the reach we might not get the help we need for Chippers. So people started asking us um, if they can make their own group and if they can pattern it after our rules and our systems. And Jamie was one of them. And then initially we were trying to find a community that they can help. And then we finally settled on security guards, which is what their community is. Okay. So Jamie, maybe you could talk about munting pagsaludo naman. 
Can you hear me? Hi, Jamie. I, I, I know she's still there. Um, can, yeah. Jamie, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Internet's been. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm. I've been also having issues with my internet. Yeah. Me too. Oh. There we go. Okay. There. Okay. Hi, <laughs> Jamie. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. We can hear you. So, so maybe. So, um, as Marielle said. Uh, Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Hello. Okay, so Munting Pag Saludo started um, a couple of weeks after the Super Trooper initiative was made. And when we were thinking of a community to uh, reach out to, there were actually quite a lot of groups already that are similar to Super Trooper. So there are groups for street vendors, there are groups for um, people who work on, an, on a daily wage basis. And so choosing security guards is actually, um, it's a bit personal for us, for us four who created it, because um, three of us graduated from UP and uh, one of us graduated from Ateneo. And we know stories of guards who are stuck in their posts there at school, at the campus. And here where I live, uh, security guards are, are also stuck here in our um, building because of the lockdown. And so that was basically the reason why we chose to reach out to security guards. Okay. All right. Um, so what does Munting Pagsaludo do? You accept donations and then you give it out to the security guards? Rainy, are you still there? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. See. It, it, yeah. The internet's really yeah. bad nowadays. No. Um. But maybe you would know. So how does Munting Pagsaludo work? Back um. Today? I'm pretty sure they function the same way. Um. Direct donations. Then. Uh. What the admins do is they, uh, screen all the posts because you would be surprised at the number of scammers who try to, post at this time. Like I know that life's hard, but we always say like. You can always find, there are always groups that can help you, whatever you do. Just don't resort to identity theft or, you know, fraud. Mm -hmm. So the admins would have to deal with that. Okay, James back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. There you go. There's Jamie. Hello, Jamie. Can you hear me? I hope you can hear me. Okay, it's just really okay. Um, so yeah, thank you, uh, Maria, for talking about Super Tuber and a bit of um, Munting Pagsaludo. We'll just go back to Jamie when she has um, better connection. I'll, I'll talk to you also again later. All right, okay. so thank you. We have we have one more youth organization to talk to, and he's here today, um, the, the one and only representative. His name is TJ Malvar. He is, um, his organization is called Puso Kitchen. So may we have TJ on screen. Hello, TJ. Okay. Hello. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you also for being part of this show. So, TJ, um, before we talk about Puso Kitchen, uh, maybe you could give us a brief background of yourself. Um, okay. I'm, I know, I'm a doctor by profession. I uh, graduated, I passed the boards last 2015. So I've been a primary healthcare practitioner for almost five years already. And I serve as a village doctor here in our barangay in Antipolo, in Barangay Calawis. And I'm a uh, but also. So okay. those are my those are those are the two hats that I wear. Uh being a doctor and being a, a public servant at the community level. And that essentially led to me thinking about taking off Puso Kitchen um when the lockdown was announced. Okay. So um yeah, you're you're a doctor by profession. Um congrats by the way <laughs> on passing the board. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And um, so what is your, how do I say this, medical track? Is that the right term? Mm, well, <clears throat> you should, traditionally, you go into a residency after graduating mm. from the boards. Um, mm. But I think a lot of doctors uh, nowadays are leaning more towards alternative career paths. Um, 
Kasi millennial doctors na rin eh. So millennials like, di ba, carving out our own niche. So I think for a lot of doctors, ganun din. So I didn't end up specializing. Um, my passion really right now is um, primary healthcare, so community medicine, and at the same time, well, very recently because of the COVID-19 crisis, um, I'm very involved with activities related to food security. Security, okay. Well, that, that's that's nice to know. No? So we have a doctor slash kagawad pala on this show for today. All right. So maybe you could um, tell us more about Puso Kitchen. Um, Puso Kitchen. Um, initially, it's really a soup kitchen. So Puso is a kind of a play on words, diba? Ano ba tal- anagram ba yun? Or something. But Puso soup, diba? Tapos kitchen. So our intention was really to serve um, hot meals to the vulnerable, vulnerable uh, members of our population in our community. So that's pregnant mothers, senior citizens, tsaka underweight children. So our initial target was about 300. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> sorry, we initially, um, my initial parang attempt at raising funds for it was through a Facebook post, uh, which I'm sure a lot of the groups who raised funds for um, you know, the various COVID-19 um, efforts uh, used also, social media. Um, so I posted on Facebook, I think that's March 18, the night that Duterte announced the ECQ. So I was very worried about the welfare of our community. So at the time, the COVID-19 um, crisis was very abstract. Until now, it's very abstract for us in terms of the health aspect because we have, we've have we had zero cases here. Um, but the social economic aspect is one that has uh, really been felt um, in our community because we have a lot of trabajo. We have a lot of farmers who lost access to the market, so they're unable to to sell their goods essentially. So we started Puso Kitchen March 24, um, as early as the first uh, week of the lockdown, and then we we began serving hot meals, you know, hot and healthy meals, um, to averaging about 300 meals per day. But then very quickly after that about two weeks after we transitioned already to Puso Goods or um, our attempt to distribute uncooked food items, so rice and vegetables, to 1,800 families. And we've been doing that ever since. Okay. okay. So with when you, so you started out as a soup kitchen, right? Um, you Would you have um, volunteers for this? Um, so we, our base of operation is Mount Pura Nature Reserve. It's an mm-hmm. ecotourism destination in Rizal. Um, I suggest when the lockdown is lifted, hope, <laughs> hope your listeners <laughs> can um, come, come and experience. But mm-hmm. our staff for Mount Pura Nature Reserve uh, is essentially our volunteers for, for Puso Kitchen. But apart from that, we also utilize our barangay health workers and other concerned citizens within the community um, to help out. And then, of course, I can't I can't stress enough how important um, you know, friends, families, NGOs, schools, my religious groups, how essential they've been in really enabling us to do the work that we that we're doing by donating either in cash or in kind. Okay, cash and in kind. Okay, and then you mentioned um, now um, it's more of the goods, not you. Yeah. Yeah. So we well we still donate meals. Uh, mm-hmm. For example, we get a donation from Jollibee or from Panda Express. Uh, we deliver. Uh, we cook it. We cook the food and then we we distribute. But for the most part, we order. We get rice. We get rice and then fresh vegetables, talaga. And then that's what we distribute along with sometimes coffee or soap or alcohol. Um, because meals are very hard to annoy. To ration out, like for example, nakataon lang nakakain ka na, and then binigyan ka ng cooked food, di ba? Uh, hindi man lang pwede yun, ex- yung shelf life nun extend to what, one day, two days, three days. And cost, giving away uncooked food items is the most cost effective. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, we have to be also extra careful no, nowadays. Um, but uh, I heard na you have photos that you 
um could show today maybe we can have those photos on screen there yeah. okay so oh, what's this so that was our i know that was our shipment of uh, veg veggies from benguet okay. we were very uh, lucky to parang make a connection with the da um office of uh, region well for the cordillera cordillera region so we ordered tons of carrots tons of sayote cauliflower um so we've ordered for them from them i think at least four times already and each time it's a huge shipment talaga and then we that's what we distribute and it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a nice parang break from the canned goods and from the sardines diba? it's it's healthier and then the nice thing with this is um for example the carrots it's very healthy for babies uh because of the pandemic there there's a lot of parang moms who are struggling to give their babies milk so carrots is actually a very good alternative uh, mashed carrots so yun lang parang ganun yung naging ano namin naging parang um direction namin na instead of canned goods we'll focus on fresh vegetables but of course we still got donations of canned goods from groups like century tuna san miguel uh and we gave them away and equally satisfied naman yung mga tao mga um, they're always, always very happy whatever they get from 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 us from Puso Kitchen. Um, so yeah, yun yung mga pictures ng operations namin. And then we try, we try to kind of minimize our use of um, plastic. So we try to put the goods in eco bags, and then we ask them to give it back afterwards. Um, pero syempre because of the, ano, it's really tricky, it's really, we can't afford, we can't parang help use plastic sometimes pa din. Um, but because we're a nature reserve, we really try to promote sustainability. Medyo, ano kami dun, parang, um, parang we just accepted that, you know, um, wala, wala tayo masyadong magagawa for now. But, um, as long as we are able to, so to do the good that we want to do, okay lang na Okay. So this is all in Rizal, am I correct? It's only in our barangay, Barangay Calawis in Antipolo. Um, okay. It, it's the poorest, it's the most remote barangay. Um, so we're at the foothills of the Sierra Madre mountain range. And we're home to 1,800 families. Um, and the portion of them are actually indigenous people, the mga dumagats. So, yun yung talagang community namin. And I guess we're lucky kasi well-defined yung community namin. Uh, other groups are also doing similar efforts in other cities like Kazan City or Manila. It's very difficult. Like for example, in Payatas, um, pag may dumating dyan na relief um, goods, tapos nakita ng mga tao because of the hunger, because of the, the food insecurity, nagkakar ng agawan and everything, um, which we also experienced. Pero after a while, nung na-realize nila na lahat sila makakakuha, hindi na sila nag-uunahan. Parang nasanay na sila. They just, they stay in their house and then we deliver it to, the, at, uh, to them at their doorstep. Um, so ganun yung naging ano namin, parang operation sa amin kasi nga may social distancing component. Okay, yeah. alright. So um, what is your next, um, what are your next steps for Uso Kitchen? Um, do you see... Uso Kitchen still continuing on even after, um, well, because right now, no, starting June 1, we're going to tran transition into GCQ na. So, um, what are your future plans for Uso Kitchen? Well, Uso Kitchen is really, ano lang, parang we're buying time. So, we raised enough uh, funds to last us until mid-July. So, hopefully by mid-July, um, our Panda residents in our community are already growing their own food or parang are already harvesting the you know the fruits and vegetables not fruits the vegetables that they planted at the start of the lockdown mm -hmm. so hopefully um augment nun yung pangailangan nila at the same time we're hoping that a lot of them have already gone back to work so hindi na ganun kataas yung need nila for aid um but we intend to probably shift back to the original concept of Puso Kitchen as a soup kitchen. So we'll, we'll parang continue naman serving hot meals a lit to the vulnerable sectors of the population. Because um, I think even outside of the pandemic, soup kitchens still have a role in our society. It's not as strong as this role it has in, uh, role soup kitchens have in 
other countries like in the US. But here in the Philippines, I think uh, my role in soup kitchens. And then we, um, because of my experience in Puso Kitchen, we're going to put up a social enterprise called Gising Gising PH. So we'll start selling vegetables. Um, what our model is, we'll utilize a Tom's model, the one is to one. So for every box of vegetables that we sell, we donate a box of vegetables also to a family. So because of the margin, because of the supply chain, the convoluted supply chain, ang mahal ng gulay natin sa market. But if you go straight to the farmer, you get it at fair prices uh, that the farmer is still able to earn. But at the same time, you're able to um, uh, sell it also at uh, at market price na hindi naman um, masyadong expensive for the buyer. But at the same time, dun sa margin na yun, we'll, we'll be able to support the nutritional needs of a family for a week. So hopefully, um, this model is um, accepted and it works because if so, we'll really be able to continue the, the good that we've been doing and it's going to be more sustainable because I think that um, char the charity model is not very sustainable because there's donor fatigue. But if it's a social enterprise, um, I think there's nothing stopping it from you know growing and continuing um, for years to come. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, DJ, for for sharing. And I I, um, I pray for the best for Puso Kitchen. It, it's such a great idea. Actually, all the organizations today. Yeah, really I'm very I'm very yeah. impressed with the, with the stories of the other guests that you have on your show. Right. Same, same here. The, the ideas are really just out there and they're really showing that, you know, we can, they, they can actually do something. So same then with Puso Kitchen. Um, really, I, um, I, I love the story. I love all the stories. But again, thank you so much, TJ. I'll talk to you again in a bit with the others. Um, all right. So we have Jamie again. Um, Jamie Gonzalez back. Um, we lost her for a while, but just to give a brief background, um, munting pagsaludo, they focus naman on donating to the security guards who I believe are also frontliners. So um, Jamie is here to talk about, just to give us like um, a brief background on munting pagsaludo. So hello, Jamie. Can you hear me? Hi. Okay, there. Yeah. yeah, I think maybe the video was not um, eating up yeah. the connection. Okay, all right. So um, a while ago, Marielle mentioned, Marielle from Super Trooper um, mentioned mm -hmm. that um, you were the one who approached her um, since you mm -hmm. are in the same batch. And that's how Munting Pagsaludo came to be, no? So maybe you could just give us... Um, uh, again, a brief background on... We'll be back shortly, making a difference. Only here on V81 Radio, South Manila.